What up guys? Today I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about aerodynamics and uh, the subject is going to be center of lift and center of gravity and how that has effects on the aircraft's aerodynamic characteristics. So I got a couple uh, aircraft here that I'm very familiar with that have flown. 737-400, ATR-42, 737-300, and lastly a 737-800, or 700, excuse me. These are aircraft that I've flown when I work for Continental Airlines, I flew the 737 800, 400, 700, 600 series, and 300 series. When I worked for American Eagle, which is a branch of the American Airlines, I actually worked and flew the uh, ATR 42, which is a turboprop. So, anyways, I'm going to talk to you guys about the lift and uh, excuse me, the center of lift and the center of gravity of the aircraft and how that has an effect on aerodynamic characteristics and stability. So if you notice these aircraft, for example, here, here's the wing off that uh, Southwest jet. Um, trying to explain it. So I have another model here. Um, center of gravity Okay, center of gravity would be where this aircraft actually rotates. It spins quite well because the center of gravity is very close to where the model can spin around at. It's because it's got a little, little like little knobby, bumpy thing on the bottom. So, anyways, give or take, the center of gravity of this aircraft would be about, which is pretty darn close actually. For this aircraft, the center of gravity would be about here. That's why when you're loading an aircraft, you have a range of where you want the center of gravity, is, which is the center of gravity CG limit. The reason why you have a CG limit is because the aircraft has another factor, which is known as center of lift. And this would be the most beautiful way to illustrate because it has a straight wing. Center of lift would be about here. It's not actually in the middle of the wing. It's actually more towards the center a little bit in front. It's usually in front. Um, the center of gravity is in front of the center of lift. Therefore, in this illustration here, this represents the bottom, represents the aircraft's center of gravity, while the top represents the center of lift. So this would be the part up here would be the point where the wing's main upward lift is focused while the bottom part of this lure represents the aircraft's main point of uh, focus for where the weight is. If you draw a visual line between the tail of the fish to the nose, if you notice the center of lift is behind the center of gravity, because of that, it noses down slightly and becomes very stable. So now you visualize the wings. So the aircraft stabilizes about a couple degrees below, nose down horizon. Just remember, remember before, this is level. So now it's essentially stabilized. And as the aircraft speeds up, more lift is generated and more stability is uh, created because the aircraft wants a weather vane. So therefore, when you add a tail to it, a tailplane or an empennage, it acts like a weather vane. So as the aircraft speeds up, it's completely stable like a weather vane. But as soon as you slow down, the uh, weather vane, it can't really weather vane that good. So therefore, as it stalls, 
it wants to nose down slightly, therefore restoring lift. The difference between this and a 737 is when you draw a visual rotation point right here in the center, the 737's engine wants to go forward, correct? And as it wants to fly forward, you have a thrust line, which is illustrated directly through the engine from the front to the back. Let's let the thrust line be represented by the paint, the yellow mark on the engine. So as if you were to put the engine well, actually, like this, your thrust line would be perfect. But because the 737's engines are below the wing, what happens is it creates a pendulum effect. So as the aircraft wants to speed up and thrusts is increased, it'll pendulum up because the thrust line is not directly behind the center of gravity. It's in front and below. Because of that, the 737 has a nasty tendency during a stall situation that it wants to actually want to, as it stalls, uh, here, uh, get a better view here, as it stalls, it begins to kind of fall. If you were to thrust, it will want to pitch the nose up, so it has a kind of a nasty tendency to want to tail stall because you do not have the weather vane effect. Good illustration why airplanes have tails because if you were to take the airplane and push it through the wind like this, it's going to weather vane because it's all this big surface area is going to make it want to weather vane into the wind. So therefore when it's, uh, so not only that, as I mentioned before in this demonstration, as you slide sideways, the weather, the wind pushes on it. It makes it want to go into the wind no matter what. It also has the same kind of effect for the tail, which helps give it pitch stability. So as it stalls, you have less pitch stability, and not to mention you have the lower thrust line. See? The uh, airplane's center of gravity is in the wing, and the thrust line is below, so it's kind of like a lever. So it acts, it's kind of a pendulum. So it really wants to just, just kind of wants to remote nose up. That's why as soon as we throttle up, the nose wants to climb. And as soon as I, as I throttle back down, it just kind of wants to settle because you lose the thrust line and the aircraft becomes an equilibrium. So therefore, as you thrust up, as soon as I throttle back, it's just gonna kind of balance, kind of like, doing a full idle descent. I'm kind of like, it kind of, you just kind of let the nose sink a little bit. And it sinks about like that doing a full idle descent. If I were to take my hands off the controls during a cruise, it'll descend about like that. That's why we, you know, we change the aerodynamics by uh, adjusting the trim. So that's why, you know, we get our descent rate. So that's why a lot of times we're, we're level flat when we're descending. Then when we need to dive for the airport, we just go more. Uh, so if you th stall, like I said earlier, if you stall, it's going to want to pitch up. That's why you try to throttle back and get that nose level, then throttle down. Because otherwise, if you stall and you throttle up, it's, it can make it worse. You can end up just... That's why it takes so much time for the aircraft to stall. 
I mean, excuse me, the recover because the airplane just practically when it stalls, it just kind of just goes and just wants to go and go. So it's going to stall typically about like that. And the most likely situation for a big jet like this to stall would be either during the landing if you encounter a severe uh, tailwind, wind shear. But it, if it wind shear, it'd be a little more like wind shear would be more like this. So it's hard to explain, but and the last situation would be if you're um, climbing out, which is highly unlikely, because uh, you would um, realize it. But the only worst case scenario I have to say for stall would be if actually if you're actually cruising the aircraft and. And somehow you end up with a situation when the aircraft slows down to the point which you can't fly anymore because possibly the possibly that the air is too thin, which is highly unlikely, very unlikely. That's a very rare situation. But typically these things don't stall. I have actually have stalled a real 737. It was a 737 uh, 400, and when the th thing stalled, it just kind of just the nose just kind of went. Like that, because it just kind of just fell, kind of like no. I mean, it wasn't like sharp drop like a Cessna stall. It's kind of more of a. So I can't I can't illustrate it because it's it's, it's a stall. It kind of just went. Oh well, it didn't hit that, but it just yeah. But that's it, guys. I'm I've tried to explain it to you guys. Hopefully, it might make some sense and probably made more confusing questions and answers. But hey, I thought I'd give it a shot. This is Nico. Peace, guys.